I was dealing with some mental health stuff that kind of runs in my family, and I wasn't really aware of that it was creeping up on me. Um, it kind of hit me pretty serious. I started to struggle very early on in my career with Dallas. I spent months fighting that urge of like, you, you shouldn't be struggling right now, Tyrell. No one is going to feel sorry for you. And that just made me fall deeper and deeper and deeper into it. Tyrell Terry, born September 28th, 2000. To most, I'll forever be known as a bust, a failure, or a waste of talent. While those may be true when it comes to basketball, it's the biggest failures in life that lead to the greatest success. The words of today's feature as a part of a farewell letter announcing his retirement from basketball at the age of 22 years old after just two seasons in the NBA, playing 13 games in total. I decided to do this feature because of the importance of this person and of his story struggling with mental health since a child, one that runs in his family, all while dealing with the pressures of the journey of basketball. His story actually gives me a deep appreciation for the players that have some way made it through said journey and achieved whatever success they found in the end. It's not an easy path and it's not all about one end result. It's about the journey, because in the end, those memories created along the way, those feelings and situations encountered, shape the human you are outside of the basketball player that was built. The ultimate goal is to make it to the NBA, and few compared to initial numbers ever get to that destiny. The rest are left in a maze trying to figure their way through as that dream fades away. It's like time expires and the maze turns into a different one called life. It's also important to understand that making it anywhere doesn't end the journey. There's still a transition period that requires great attention and great focus on how you let things affect you mentally until you can find peace in that new stage of the process. Terry was a player I enjoyed watching at Stanford as he seemed so poised in that structure and fit like a glove for that program and academic institution. He's gone under the radar a lot since his lone season at Stanford, where he averaged 14.6 points a game, over 40% from three, attempting five a game, 89% from the foul line in 32 minutes a game, starting every game since he got there. He was a Pac-12 All-Freshman and All-Conference Honorable Mention. Leaving high school, he was rated just outside the top 100, but was a top 7 point guard recruit, headed to a Stanford program that was the exact key he needed to open the doors to his NBA dreams. After a season, he entered and remained in the 2020 NBA Draft with good advice that he had the potential to be a first round pick. If only that happened. Terry was one pick away from this day of early retirement never happening. Now the 31st pick has to figure out life after basketball and how to accurately move forward with his mental health intact and motivation to find that peace he seeks. What happened in the stunted growth story of Tyrell Terry? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Tyrell Terry is a 6'2 point guard from Valley City, North Dakota, moving to Minneapolis, Minnesota at the age of 5 years old. It's there his on-court star was born for one of the best high schools in the nation, De La Salle, who won 5 straight Class 3A titles by Terry's freshman year. He'd win again as a sophomore and once more as a senior, making him one of the winningest high school prospects in his class. He was rated the number 7 point guard in 2019, finalist for Minnesota Mr. Basketball and the state's Player of the Year award. He averaged 22.6 points a game and 7 assists as a senior and chose Stanford over Baylor and Indiana. Stunt number 1. More time to develop Initially, the reason I think Tyrell Terry found it too weighing to continue playing basketball is because of how fast he developed as a basketball player, but how far he left other things behind he needed to carry him through the next stage of his journey. It's like going mountain climbing six hours away, executing navigation there perfectly, 
breakfast already digested, then realizing you left your ropes and safety equipment at home. If you've never reached past high school, then Division I sports, to the professional world of basketball, then it's hard to understand when I tell you that it's one of the most strenuous journeys mentally you can choose. At some point, the sport you loved becomes a business or work, a responsibility, a chore for you instead of what it used to be, which was a fun time to hang out with friends, clean competition where the outcome can be forgotten in days, and nothing is that serious as your future is still all in front of you. No one's getting paid outside the coaches, but you and your teammates as players don't get this feeling of something as serious as someone making ends meet is on the line based on how you perform. Your biggest worries are winning games and playing well, which can be stressful in their own right, but nothing compared to when you get to the other levels. For me, I realized the sport I love changed the day I got off the plane to my university. Gone were my friends, family, and environment that supported me to that point. Everything relied on me now. In Terry's case, he found success as soon as he got to Stanford, maybe even more than he expected, having an All-American honorable mention freshman year, helping his team to a 20-12 season. His game was making strides past expectations on the floor, but that doesn't mean you otherwise are ready for the business of basketball that will really take place on the next level. A cutthroat world of are you productive enough or not that determines your job security and future. Also that of your family and all depending on you, not to mention fans of the game that will love you for playing well and criticize you if you don't. That pressure isn't something everyone is developed enough for, and Terry is a great example. Skills-wise, yes, he was ready to go, but mentally, after small Minneapolis living, Ivy League ball for just 31 games, Terry couldn't find the strength to continue fighting for a game he just didn't love anymore. Maybe a few more years to make more of a foundation at Stanford would have done wonders in hindsight. Stunt number two, being a second round pick. Since a sophomore in high school, Terry said he's had to deal with mental health issues that run in his family, mainly the feeling of anxiety and catastrophic thinking. What if this went wrong? Or what if that collapses? What if I come out and go 0 for 11 from three? What if I have six turnovers this game? What will happen to me? Imagine being in this state of mind, then being the 31st overall pick, one spot removed from a first round guaranteed contract that at least relieves you of thinking about your immediate future somewhat. Now as the person described, you're left to ponder all the worst case scenarios of what could happen as a non-guaranteed second round pick. He was taken by the Dallas Mavericks at that a team I've always saw it difficult to find footing because success with them is very particular. Either you're the star or you're a role player. There's really nothing in between since the Dirk Nowitzki days and now Luka Doncic. For a star struggling with mental health, now drafted to a team that already has one of the best players in the game at your position and no real need for you, I can see how that moved Terry closer to want to give it all up. He made his NBA debut December 25th, 2020, playing less than two minutes and scoring one basket. He split time there and in the G League, but never got the footing he needed as a player nor mentally, being a second round pick and not much control over his future. Stunt number three, leaving the game. Having no control is like kryptonite for people struggling with anxiety, depression, and insecurity. Those people have usually found a routine that helps them prepare and be ready for the challenges they believe will inevitably come their way. So taking away their ability to see it coming and prepare for it in some way can make a person like this crack under the business basketball becomes as early as after high school in rare cases before. Mental health is something Terry talked about often in his pre-draft interview and always acknowledged that he was dealing with being aware of its presence in his life since day one. 
He tried meditation, talking to his friends about it, and expressing himself on social media to name a few, but eventually he says he fell out of love with basketball and is now ready to let the balloon that elevated him thus far go. He says he hopes to find who he is outside of being a player and therefore cannot continue fighting the battle of his mental health and a game that became too serious. Going through what he went through, all the success in high school and fast track development in college to the highs of making the NBA but not being ready to be in the NBA in the position he was being used is understandable he'd take this direction. But being gone at 22 years old, it's sad to see a player with this much potential and opportunity not be able to continue. All in all, Tyrell Terry is a brave young man. He's dealing with his personal health over everything, which includes being in rare air as one of the few that get to make the NBA ever. For him at 22 years old, life means too much and he's confident basketball isn't the only interesting piece of him. He was nice at Stanford, Steph Curry-like, as if you haven't heard that enough. When things got too serious and unrecognizable, it led to him leaving way too soon and for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Salute to Tyrell Terry, hopefully he gets the help he needs. Much respect, it's your boy JC Stunning Growth, and I'm out.